And thank God and gave me the chance that Grace and I can come to here, share Jesus' love with you and share our life for you. And Grace and I, we, we serve God already over 45 years. But before, we used a very traditional way to share gospel and start the church. Until the end of 1994, we become missionaries. We serve with International Mission Board of Southern Baptist Convention. Our first term, we serve in Hong Kong. During that time, we still use very traditional way to share gospel. We give people the gospel track. We knock the door, every door to share gospel. During that time, every year, from Grace and I, from our two of us, we can lead around 40 to 50 to 60 people become Christian. And every year we start one new church. I think our work is okay. But in year 2000, Holy Spirit touch our heart, call us, transfer our work, get into the China, in the big country. Before, we never thought we will go over there because originally we came from Taiwan. We, honestly, we scare communists. We don't want to go. But the Holy Spirit touch our heart. So we pray and pray. After two weeks, we make decision. We need to obey. And we went to over there. And during, when we get in over there, we face to our new mission area, three cities very near Hong Kong. We find out the local registered population in year 2000 is 5.8 million. It's a lot. But we also find out they have another 15 million factory workers that come from a whole different place, work in these three, three, three cities. That means in these three, three cities, total population, population over 20 million. So Grace and I, we talk about in next three years, how many people we can lead them become Christian and how many church we can start. Before in Hong Kong, three years, not over 200 new believers and only three churches. But in here, if after three years, still only 200 new believers and three churches, the number is too small. Then we talk about, okay, we work very hard. If we can lead over 1,000 new believers and 10 churches, but compare 20 million, the Christian population only 0.1%. The number is still too small. So every day we kneel down, we pray, and we study the Bible. We ask God, please show us the best strategy, how we can use in our ministry. Until one day in the midnight, God showed us the best strategy is in Jesus' great commission. You just have the Bible words over there. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. From our childhood, we can memorize the Bible words. But in 9 midnight, we just find out we never obey the Bible word. In Jesus' great commission, first, Jesus said, go, right? But before, we were wrong. We always say, come. Be before, every Sunday, we encourage our church member, please, bring people, come over, over to our church. Invite people, come. But Jesus not say, come. Jesus said, go. Because they are lost. They don't know where the door you need to go out to find the lost. You cannot wait people at your church. You need to go out to find the lost. So first is go, not waiting people to come. Second, Jesus said, share gospel to all nations. That means share to everyone. But before, we were wrong. Every time Grace and I, we share gospel, we always choose somebody to share with them. We look, oh, this person is nice. Share with him. And I look, that person may be not easy later. You know, we always choose. But Jesus said, share to everyone. And you remember Jesus gave us a story. They have a farmer go out, went out, sow the seed. He's a farmer. He should be know which land already prepared, right? But that farmer is very strange. He sowed the seed to everywhere. Yes, some fell in on the roadside, bird eat, no fruit. You know, some in the dry place, no re good result. Some in the narrow place, no good result. But some in the good soil can God's fruit 100 times, 60 times, 30 times. So from here we understand, so the seed is our responsibility. Only Holy Spirit can let the seed grow up. So number two, we need to share to everyone. Don't choose. Number three, 
Jesus said what? Make them be my disciple. In here, Jesus does not say, okay, let them be my follower, or only the name of the Christian, or only the name of the church members. No. Jesus said, make them be my disciple. So Grace and I, we talk about what it means for the disciple. We find out a disciple, he needs to learn everything from his master to teach him until one day he also can be a master to teach other people. So during that time, gave us idea. We will train everybody, become the trainer to train others, training for trainer. We believe every Christian, even brand new believer, until he can train others so he can grow up, be a disciple. If a Christian, you never train others, you never can be a disciple. So we will train everybody, be a disciple, be a trainer, not only church members. That's number three. Number four, Jesus said, baptizing them by the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit. We all understand baptism like our testimony, right? So we will use this strategy. We will train everybody use your own story, your own testimony to share Jesus' love. In here, you have freedom. Anywhere, any place, you can share Jesus' love. But in many other countries, government not allow you to share Jesus' love. You know? But thank God, anywhere, any place, you can share your own story. So number four, we need to train everybody use your own story to share Jesus' love. Number five, Jesus said, what I teach you, you need according the same way to teach them. Before, in our traditional way, we let the people become Christian, then we put them in the church. I think right now, pastor, it's your job. Actually, not pastor's job. You let people become Christian, you need to train them by yourself. Like you have a newborn baby. Once you have baby, you will not immediately give the baby to other people to, to nursing your baby. You will take care of the baby by yourself, right? So once your little people become Christian, immediately you need to train them by yourself. So number five, when you train everybody, become the trainer to train others, okay? Number six, obey. If we all understand Jesus' Great Commission without obey, nothing happens. But once we obey, we can receive the great, great promise from our Jesus the Lord. Jesus said, surely, I will be with you until the end of the age. That's a very important promise. In the Bible, over 20,000 promises from our God. But everything, we need to do our part. Once we obey Jesus' great commission, we can receive the promise. So in that midnight, Grace and I, we just find out before we work very hard. But the result is very poor because we always use our own idea, our own experience, our own knowledge, we not a totally obey Jesus' great commission. So in that midnight, we make sure we need to totally obey Jesus' great commission. Train everybody, become the trainer. Then we write down, in the whole world, only two kind of people, no other people. You know which two kind of people? Do you know? Safe and the lost, right? No other people. For the lost people, we need to share Jesus' love with them. Then let them become Christian. Then immediately, train them, become the trainer to train others. For the safe person, also immediate train and become the trainer to train others. So we use this way to train everybody become trainer. So our first training group in a very countryside, a small church, that church only 57 church members. They are all farmers. But the first time we're training them, there are around 30 farmers join our, join our training. So we use Jesus' great, great commission to challenge them to train other people. But they, they stop me, they say, Pastor, we don't know how can do it. I say, yes, I, I understand. Today, Christians cannot share gospel, only two reasons. First, a lot of people over there, I don't know who I can share with them. Second, I don't know what I can share with them. So I ask everybody, first, write down your name list. All people relate to you. Your family person, your relative, your neighbors, your good friends, anybody you know them, but they are non-Christian, write down their name. Every day, pray for them, name by name. Very detailed talk to God. Holy Spirit will touch their heart, will prepare their heart and prepare your heart and give you a chance, give you knowledge how to share God with them. So name list, very important. Second, everybody write down your simple story. Only one minute story, you know, very easy. 
You know, your story includes three parts. Before non-Christian, what life I, I have, and when I become Christian, and after I become Christian, what kind of joyful life, peaceful life you have. Write down your simple story. And I like them to practice. After practice, I like them to learn how to share your story, and I teach them how to share Jesus' story. And every time we train them one lesson, let them practice. Practice until they feel comfortable. Tomorrow they can train other people. Then I give them enough material. Let them to train other people. Next week, come back. I train you another lesson and the practice. And I give you enough. I give you enough material. You can train other people. We use this way. We focus, train everybody be a trainer. Never give up anybody. Only 30 people, 30 farmers. Only after three months from the 30, 30 farmers, they lead over 200 new believers and the 27 small groups. Yeah, before Grace and I, three years in Hong Kong, only not over 200 new believers. Right now, we obey Jesus Great Commission. In three, three months, the result better than our three years result, right? So we, we train everyone in every city, every town, every house church, every government registered church, everyone, in factory, in, in university, everywhere. We train everybody to become trainer. Only two kind people, right? Safe and lost, you know. So we train everybody to become the trainer. So it's over our thoughts. I tell you, after 13 months, from the first, only from the first group, the 30 farmers, they share gospel to 17 different towns because they, are, they have a lot of relatives. They share gospel to 17 different towns. In 13 months, they lead over 10,000 new believers, 906 small groups. We cannot image. Our whole life cannot do that. But once you obey Jesus' great commission, not you did that. It's God help you. It's Jesus be with you. Totally different. Our life totally changed. Our trainer's life totally changed. Then send God. Then T4D not only work in our area. Share to Southeast Asia, South Asia, Central Asia, Middle East, Africa, Europe, North, South America, everywhere. Right now in the whole world, over 200 different countries and area, people use the T4T. Every year we got report, over a million, million people's life changed because obey Jesus Great Commission. So today, I will encourage you, obey Jesus Great Commission. You will feel your life really totally changed. I give you one testimony. Today, not, I cannot talk too long, only 45 minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I gave you one, one, one test morning. In, in 2000, 2000, 2015, in 2015, we training in Bangladesh. You know, they have several different group people join our training. But one group, all its Muslim background, believer. They are around 36 people, all Muslim, Muslim background. They have a lady, name is Nasima. The lady, when she come over to join the training, we can look, she's very poor, and very poor healthy, and very sad, and he, he have very sick, and she share with grace. She said, you know, because I'm a Muslim lady, you know, when, when I become Christian, my husband very mad at me, and many, many times push me down the street, and right now, my husband won't divorce with me. And my children, no any children obey me. I'm so sad. I don't know what value for I, am, I, I become the Christian. So right now you train me to be a trainer. What I can do? So grace comfort her and teach her and pray for her and encourage her. You know, so after three days training, she went back home. She talked to grace, I will do my best. So we continue to pray for her. And in 2016, after one year, July, we went back to Bangladesh. Those group, every group, people come back, give us a report. And this group also come back. From this group, 36 people, only 30 people come back. But they gave us a report. From the 30 people, last year, they lead over 5,000 new believers. Then Nashima come to the stage. We're so surprised. 
totally different person. Very good, healthy, strong woman. You know, he, strong lady. She gave the testimony. She said, thank God. Last year, by God's by God, by God, by God help, I personally lead over 136 people become Christian, all Muslim, including my husband. Thank God. You know, in, during that time, we find out for us, it is impossible. But for God, nothing impossible, right? Thank God. And he said, I started 23 house church. My husband already started three house church. And my children in the school, everybody's 3A right now. God blessing our house. And he said, she said, next month, my husband will resign his job, join my training team. Send God. In Muslim area, it is impossible. But for God, it's nothing impossible. Like those kind of testimony everywhere, everywhere. Today, I'm so happy. Pastor Jerry can give me the chance. Let me share with you. You know, in our book, I have a lot of testimony. You know, and also our life's testimony. You know, if you read the book, you know, you can find out the T4T actually is our life. You know, God changed our life. Before, I'm a very bad, bad person. I'm PK. My father is pastor. I think I know everything, but I don't know anything. Yeah. You know, <laughs> my wife came from Buddhist family. I always thinking, only I holy. I'm holy one, but actually, I'm, I'm bad one, you know. <laughs> God, through my wife, gave me a lot of help. So I hope you can buy our book, support our work, okay? Not, not, and not only pay 15 U.S. dollars. <laughs> pay, pay, pay double. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but... Uh, Tonight, I will also will share with you, I always encourage our trainer, it, another very inc important thing tonight I, will, I want to share with you. I want to answer the calling from the whole universe, call us to share gospel. How we can do that? Because we listen to the calling. The first calling from above. You already know Jesus called us to share gospel, right? Yeah. And in Isaiah chapter 6, you know the Bible verse, yeah. verse 8. When Isaiah worshiped in the temple, he had a vision. He, he worshiped in the temple, but he had the vision. And he heard God call him. He said, who we can send? Who can go for, for us? He answered, please send me, I'm here. Yeah. You know, he answered the calling. Today we need to answer the calling from the above. I don't know your situation. When I share gospel in East Asia, many times we share Jesus' love with other people. Many, many Asian people will ask me, hey, where are your God? Show me where are your God. I will believe in your God. We, we, serve, we worship in the Buddhist temple. You know, the Buddha is in the temple. We know where is the God. We, we, we worship the stone, the, the God of stone, the stone here. We worship the 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 God of tree, the tree here. But where is your, your God? If you show me your God, I will believe in your God. So when I went back home, I kneeled down, I pray. I'm so sad. I talked to God. I said, my God, I know you are almighty God. You created the whole universe. You're almighty God. You stay in my heart. I know you're here. But how I can present you, let other people to see you? Then I talk to God, why you give me the trouble? You know, how about like this? You just suddenly come down from the heaven, then very loudly announce, I'm God, everybody believe in me. Finish, right? <laughs> then I find out, yes, our, our God, anytime he can suddenly come down, right? But then I find out I was wrong. Our God is holding his God. It's righteousness God. But who we are? We are sinner. Once the sinner meets the holy God, you know what happened. We will be judged. We will crash. We will die. But our God, another side, feel the mercy and the love. So because his mercy and love, 
He doesn't want to suddenly come down. God sent his son to us. Anybody believe in Jesus, then meet the holy God. God will call us. It's reaching this person. So if anybody first covered by Jesus' blood, God will call anybody under Jesus' blood. It's reaching this person. Before, many people like Isaiah answer God's calling, share gospel for you, for me. So today, we are Christian. We already believe in Jesus. We already covered by Jesus' blood. So anytime we can meet our God, no problem, right? But today, how many people, they still don't know Jesus? They're still lost. So we need to answer the calling. Share Jesus' love with them. Let them cover by Jesus' God, by, by Jesus' blood. So answer the calling from above. Okay? From the above. The second calling from below. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus gave us a story. We all know the story. The rich man and the Lazarus. We know the story, right? But when they both died, the rich man in the hell, suffer over there. But he, when he look at the heaven, he find out Lazarus in the, in the heaven, in the hand of the Abraham. So he, he say, my father, would you please send Lazarus come over here? Use his small finger, give me a deep of water because I'm in here, I'm so pain. But when he understand, they cannot cross to each other. In Luke chapter 16, Verse 27, 28, what did he say? He said, my father, I beg you, please send Lazarus back to my hometown because in my house, I still have five brothers. I don't want they also come to here, to him here. You know, Jesus gave the story. Let us listen. Somebody suffer in the hell. He called us, please. Help my family person. I don't want they also come to here, to me here. I'm in here. I'm so pain. I don't want my family to hear. You know? Do we ever answer the calling from hell? He called us. He suffered all day there. You know, maybe today is the final day, final chance you can meet somebody. After tomorrow, we will lose the chance. I'm hospital chaplain for 20 years. Once afternoon, around 3 p.m., a nurse called me. He said, Pastor, here have a young man, he's a drug user. You know, right now, his drug come out. Very uncomfortable. Would you please come over to help him? I said, okay. I went to the war. I find out he's a 30 years old young man, very strong young man, a lot of tattoo, but he's a drug user. So policemen sent him in the hospital, try to help him. So right now, drug come out, a lot of noise, tear, you know. It's very uncomfortable. I talk to him. He can answer me. You know, in my heart, I understand. He needs Jesus. But for my traditional, no, for my professional knowledge, I understand. Right now, it's not a good timing because he's very uncomfortable. How you can share God with him? Then I understand many, many drug users in the early morning, more clear mind. So I say, right now I pray for you. Tomorrow early morning, I will come back to visit you again, okay? He said, okay. Then I say, if you need, anytime you need me, you can ask a nurse to call me. He said, okay. Then I pray for him. I left. Next early morning, 7 a.m., I went to hospital. First, I kneel down, pray for today. All the patients, I want to visit them. I pray for them. After that, first I went to his wall. I found out his bed is empty. I think he transferred to another room. So I went to the nurse station. I said, hey, I want to visit that person. Where he transferred, tell me which room. And the nurse helped me to look at the chart. Then the nurse looked at me. He said, Pastor, last night he died. He was dead. When I heard about that, I'm very shocked. I wept. You know, in my heart, have a voice talk to me. In, who is my brother? Yesterday afternoon, you have a chance can save him. But you say, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, never come back. Tomorrow morning, never come back. I'm so sad. 
I'm so sad. Please don't copy me. Today, maybe the last chance you can meet somebody. Because I love the chance somebody will suffer over there. Today, we need to answer the calling. Somebody suffer in the hell. He said, please help my family person. You have your name list. You, have, you know people relate to you. You already saved them or not. If you lost today's chance, maybe tomorrow you will regret like me. I'm so sad. From that day, I don't want to lose any chance. I don't want to lose any chance. The second calling, the third calling from inside, first calling from above, second from below, third from inside. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, you know Paul's testimony, verse 16, 17. Paul said, Woe to me if I'm not sure gospel. If I share voluntarily, I got a reward. But however, the responsibility already gave to me. Since Paul turned his heart to, to the Jesus, he always have a calling from, her, from his heart. So what Paul tells morning, he said, in anywhere, any place, any time, I want to save somebody. So even down the street, in the temple, in the, in, in the, in the synagogue, in the, even in the jail, he never give up to save other people, you know, because he have a calling from his heart. You know, today, we also need to answer the calling from our heart. In your heart, have you ever had the calling? to call you to share gospel. You know, another time, in the lunch time in hospital, another nurse called me. He said, Pastor, we are belong to children ICU. We have a little girl, only five years old, just passed away. But her father hope Pastor can come over, pray for her, pray for her family. So I went to the children ICU. When I get in the room, the pastor looked at me. He looked at my name pad. He said, are you a pastor? I said, yes. Then he hold my hand. He said, please, pray for my daughter. My daughter just passed away. I said, yes, I will pray for you. But tell me which church you belong to. He looked at me. He said, no, 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 pastor, I'm not a Christian. I feel very strange. You are not a Christian. Why you ask a pastor to come over and pray for your family? And he opened the curtain. On the bed, a beautiful girl. Just that on the bed. And the father pointed out the girl. He said, Pastor, I tell you, she loved Jesus. It's really touched my heart. And the, pa the father shared with me, I don't know Jesus, but sh when she stayed in the hospital, she believed in Jesus. Every day, she asked me to read the Bible for her. But when she learned she was going to die, she asked me, he said, Dad, if one day if I die, please promise me you will invite a pastor, come over, pray for me, pray for our whole family. So I promised her, today she died, please pray for us. The little girl's testimony really touched my heart. You know, only five years old, once she become Christian, she tried to save her whole family. Even she died, she never gave up. So I'm so sad. So I kneel down, touch the girl. I say, Heavenly Father, you feel the mercy and the love. Today we lost the girl. We are really sad. But uh, we understand anybody belong to you, believing in you, one day we can meet again in the heaven. Thank God. And I continue to pray for, for this family around 15 minutes. After I say, in Jesus' name, amen, I find out the father kneel down on the other side. And he hold my hand. He said, Pastor, teach me. I want to know Jesus. It's really touched my heart. So I share Jesus with him. Immediately, he accepted Jesus for his Savior. In that afternoon, the little girl's mother and the two older brothers also believe in Jesus. Whole family be saved. So the little girl, you know, once she believed in Jesus, she have a calling from her heart. She wants to save her whole family, even that. Never give up. Never give up. It's really touched my heart, you know. So this is also his Heavenly Father's heart. What is Heavenly Father's heart? Heavenly Father loves you 
save you, wants to you, save all people relate to you. This is the Heavenly Father heart. You know, Heavenly Father never give up anybody. So we need to answer the calling. But today, how many people we listen to the calling? We don't care. We don't care. We need to answer the calling because God never give up anybody. Today, you become children of God. Heavenly Father love you, save you, run through you, save all people relate to you. That's Heavenly Father's heart, you know. So if you trust, you have confidence, you will never give up until all people relate to you can be saved. You need to answer the calling. So first calling from above, second from below, third from inside. Very easy. Number four from outside. I hope today you can remember the four calling. In book of Acts, chapter 16, Paul have meeting over there. They don't know next station, which, where they need to go to share God. To. They try to go this way, Holy Spirit stop them. Try to go this way, Jesus Spirit stop them. But in that midnight, suddenly, he find a person from outside. Say, please come over to Macedonia to help us. You know, Paul once have the vision from outside. Immediately he make decision. We need to bring God to Macedonia. You know, Paul answered the vision. It's a very important answer. You know why? Because before Paul shared God only in Asia. Yeah. Only in Asia. But Macedonia belonged to Europe. So this is the first foreign mission. Once he answered the calling, he brings the gospel from Asia to Europe. Send God. Then later, whole Europe can listen gospel, right? Yeah. And the 17th, 18th century, United Kingdom become a very strong country. But thank God, they also send a lot of missionaries to the whole world. And the gospel from Europe come to the American, North America. 19th, 20th century, United States become a very strong country. Thank God. Also, we send a lot of missionaries to the whole world. Then, God was from the American to Asia. Today, we understand all economic century in the Asia. But today is the timing from Asia bring the God back to Jerusalem. But from Asia back to Jerusalem, you know it's where? Most difficult Muslim area, right? Most difficult Muslim area. You know, for the last 40 years, Muslim grew up very fast. Right now, in Europe, every big city in the, in the States, every big city has Muslim temple. You know, they influence a lot. But thank God, I tell you, for the last 20 years, many of our missionaries use t 4 t in Muslim area, do a lot of great job, a lot of great movement in Muslim area, you know. So thank God. I gave you the example, you know, in one of our missionary, name is George. He got a PhD from the States. He went to the Bangladesh. From, he worked 14, 14 years, only let seven person become Christian, Muslim. Believer. But in 2006, he went to Chiang Mai, received our T4D training. And he went back, trained this, this seven person, the T4T. You know, in two months, they lead over 200 new believers. Wow. And uh, in 2014, he met uh, with us again in the Chiang Mai. He, he showed me the generation map. From 2006 to 2014, he lead over 870,000 people become Christian in Bangladesh. Big, mass, big movement, you know. And one of another missionary served in, served in, in Ethiopia. One day, he needed to baptize 6,000 people, you know, because they use the T4T training people, you know. So many, many big movement. It's God's work, not our work. Once you obey Jesus Christ commission, you will find out totally different. So it answers the calling. You know, God called you. But right now, Grace and I, 
we retired from IMB from 2015. We're still training in the whole world. We already traveled over 55 different countries. You know, we find out we wear, wear hard, it's very heavy, very heavy. After COVID, we have changed, can many times focus in Europe, actually in UK and in Germany and in France. But we find out very sad. In Paris, only 0.05% Christian. In France, for only 0.01 per Christian. You know. Right now, in India, over 13% Christian. The biggest Muslim country, Indonesia, 25% Christian. China, 15% Christian. Even I live in Austin, Texas, 13% Christian. But since Paul brings the gospel to, to Europe, why today? Why today we lost Europe? In Turkey, in Greece, in every Europe, every Western Europe. Really sad. They need gospel. Yeah. They need help. When we're training in, in Frankfurt, our training center in a high building, down street, two, two, two street, all people take, take drug, you know, come and give them clean, neat, free, you know. Many were only 13, 13 years, 12 years, young, young, young girl, young, young boy, you know. So nobody care, nobody care. So our heart is very heavy, very heavy. You know, St. Paul answers the calling. Europe, Europe, before, it's Christian country. But right now, none. Nobody loves God. Everybody only money. But thank God. God lead Grace and I, we're training in, in Ukraine, in, in Russia, in Belarus, in many, many Eastern Europe. They did a really good job. Just before COVID-19, Grace and I, we're training in, in, in Ukraine, in Kia. You know, they did a very good job. In South Kia, have a team. In one year, they started over 2,000 churches. You know, and in, in Russia, we're training a lot of people. They did a very good job, you know, so, but right now they have fighting. We cannot win back. But thank God, you know, God never give up anybody. God love you. Today, God still want to call you to share God's love with all people related to you. Why? We don't share with them. Why? God love us. Never give up. So I hope you answer the calling from the above, from below, from inside, from outside. You know. You know why we do this? If you really have experience with Jesus' love in your life, your life will change. But you know what is the love? But you know what is the love? What is the love? You know? Bible say, God is love, right? You know who, who wrote the Bible words? God is love. John. John. Which John? Which John? Huh? Apostle John. Yeah. Why John wrote? Why not Peter? Why not Paul? Why John? Why? You know? You know? Because when Jesus crucified on the cross, everybody ran away. Only one disciple under the cross, the youngest, John. He looked on the cross, the Lord on the cross. He watched and looked. Finally, he found out this love. You know, in cross, when Jesus on the cross, no mercy. Jesus doesn't want any mercy. When Jesus bay, hold the cross, come out, many people cry for her, cry, cry for him. 
Many ladies cry for him. What did he say? He said, don't cry for me. Cry for yourself and for your children. You know, when he's on the cross, he doesn't want any mercy and no any miracle. Jesus' whole life performed over 35 times miracle, but none any miracle for himself. So on the cross, no, no miracle. No miracle. On the cross only have what? Love and forgiven. Love and forgiven. So John find out this is love. Many, many years, 3,000 years ago, people talking about love. But John say this is God is love. You know Bible words. John, chapter 3, 16. Everybody know the Bible words, right? You, you memorize the Bible word, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. But uh, how many people know 1 John, chapter 3, verse 16? One word different. One's John, 3, 16. This is 1 John, 3, 16. How many people know the Bible word? Huh? You only know the one Bible word. <laughs> okay. First John, chapter 3, 16 is what? You remember? Huh? From right now, we know what love is. We can understand what love is. What love is? What love is? Jesus died for us. So what do we need to do? We need to die for our brothers and sisters, right? So this is the love. You know, before, people talk a lot different love, but only one love is Jesus died for us on the cross. On the cross, John looked at Jesus. Jesus didn't say any other things. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they did. And uh, you know, he not received any mercy, no any miracle. But very strange, during Jesus on the cross, that six hour, at least have seven big miracles happen during that time. Earthquake, everywhere dark, and the, 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 the cotton in the temple from, from above to the bottom open. And many people die from tomb, come out. You know, God can do many miracle things, but not for Jesus. Because Jesus died for us. For he loved us. He loved us. He loved you, loved me. So today I can stand here to share with you. You know, I can tell you, my life, even I grew up from past family, but my life is very bad. Grace really suffered. You know, many times she, when she married me, she didn't know me. Many times she won't talk to me something. I just hit the table, run away. You know, my life is very messy. But by God's love, through grace, every day kneel down, pray for me. Pray, pray for me. You know, so today God can call me back. I can share the love with you. You know, I hope today you answer the calling from above, from below, from inside, outside. Very easy, right? If you don't, you forgot anything I talk, remember this for calling, okay? God call you. Not only lesson from here. Tonight, you went back home, took out your story, took out your name list, immediately share with them. You can send text message. You can send email. You can call them. Okay? Just do it. Don't wait. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much because you love us. You save us. Not before we're better than other people, before you love us. You died for us on the cross. 2,000 years ago, you already know, after 2,000 years, the sinner in Kai will be here. So you died for us. Also, you die for everyone today in this room. You love us. 
You love every single one in here. And today you call us. We'll be saved because you're loved. So you call us. Go to share the gospel to everyone, relate to us, around to us. So today we need to answer your calling. We understand your love. So we answer you. We love you. We want to accept you for my Savior. And also we obey you. So during our prayer, we need to ask everyone here. You say, tonight, I want to accept Jesus for my Savior. You raise your hand. I will pray for you. Tonight, I say, yes, Jesus, I want to accept you for my Savior. You raise your hand. I pray for you, okay? Anybody? You're not, before you're not sure you'll be safe or not tonight, you want to accept Jesus. You raise your hand. Okay? Okay, I ask you another question. You say, tonight, I want to answer the calling. Call me and obey Jesus' great commission to share gospel. You raise hand. Okay? You want to answer the calling? Anybody want to raise your hand? Okay? Okay, right now, please stand up. We ask Pastor Jerry to pray for us. Okay? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands to the Lord Jesus. And let's first pray with those that are making Jesus Lord for the first time, but we all confess him as Lord. Let's all pray together. Father God, thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and make us the person. Make me the person that you want me to be from today forward. I want to answer your call that everyone may know Jesus. Forgive my selfishness Forgive my disobedience, my self-preservation for loving myself over others. Strengthen me to take up my cross and to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that for our ministry, our church, all of our people, wherever they are, in house churches, media, the various campuses, languages, Lord, may this passion that we've heard tonight and these principles that we've heard tonight, may they become the way that we also live the way that we also pursue the lost selflessly knowing the time is short and very short for so many people so Lord do this work in us pray for yourself would you Lord do this work in me do this work in me for it is God who works in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure do this work in us in the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord. Uh, Ying and Grace, come up right up here. Honey, come over here. Luke, come over here, would you? Would you stretch your hands toward Ying and Grace? You know, the world needs Jesus. But I tell you what, the world needs people like this. You know, you... Ying doesn't have maybe the vocabulary that some of you do in English, but you sense the anointing and you sense the passion and you see the grace of God. And we need this. And so let's pray for them that with long life, God will satisfy them, that the Lord will give them longevity, 
like Caleb and Joshua. Extend them so that more and more people can be trained. So, Lord, we thank you for this man of God and woman of God, servants of the Lord. Lord, strengthen them, spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead, who dwells in them, quicken their mortal bodies in the name of Jesus. Lord, continue to open the right doors for them and continue to give them the right words at the right time. And Lord, continue to take T for T principles around the world that more may be saved. And we thank you for bringing them here to minister to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's clap in agreement, can we?